Today we're going to take a look at the Trackit migration tool. Uh, this tool is used to import data from a Trackit 11.4 instance up to the latest version of Trackit. The Trackit migration tool was redesigned in Trackit 2020 release 2, so you should be on that version or later. The big redesign basically clears the entire target database and then re-imports the data from track at 11.4. There are a few exceptions there to exactly what gets purged. Some of the configuration settings are not purged in certain situations. We'll go through all of those settings uh, for real detailed information on exactly what is imported and not imported and what is purged and what's not purged. I would recommend going and checking out the documentation or contacting support for track it. Uh, you can reach support by visiting the support site at support.trackit.com and from there you can open up a case or give them a call. So let's just start off by launching the migration tool and we will take a look at how this process works. So of course you're going to get the typical license agreement. It's going to ask you where you would like to extract the files for the migration tool. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept the default value there. You may get a user account control prompt like this, so you can just answer yes. And then the migration tool extracts all of its files that it's going to need to actually do the data import. This just takes a few seconds. Now here's the initial screen of the migration tool. It explains some of the things that I just talked about here a moment ago, so I'm not going to you know, read through all of this for you. I would carefully review this, especially if it's the first time you ever run the migration tool. Um, one very important point just to point out is that the migration tool, we call it a migration tool because some of the data has to be transformed a bit to fit into the new database structures and the new product, but it really is an import tool because nothing is going to happen to your track at 11.4 data. So you can run this as many times as you want and nothing is going to happen to your track at 11.4 data. So once you've read through all this, you can check out the documentation from the hyperlink here or you can go to support.trackit.com by clicking this hyperlink here. Once you've read through this stuff and you feel comfortable, you can click the I've read and understand all this information and then click next. And here is where we are going to begin the process. The first step you need to do is actually point out the credentials and the location of your Trackit 11 database and your new Trackit 2020 database. So I am going to start here. I'm going to go ahead and enter my SQL Server name and the database name for my Trackit 11.4. And I'm going to hit test connection and I get a successful message here. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for my Tracker 2020 database, which is also on the same server. In this case, yours is most likely not going to be on the same server. Okay, and I get a successful test here. One important point here, you're going to need to make sure the TCP protocol is enabled on each SQL server. There is more in the online help and documentation. If you have questions about that, you can talk to support, but that's important for the SQL servers to be able to talk to each other when the data is being migrated. I'm going to click next when I'm ready. Now here are some of the settings that you can configure here for data migration. The first configuration option you have is to generate a configuration report. So the configuration report is actually going to go through the track at 11.4 system and document the event policies, skill routing policies, work order policies, service level agreements, the types of reports you had, all the things that cannot be automatically copied or migrated into the new system and you'll be able to print those out or view them so that then you can use that information to recreate these things in the new Trackit installation. Now we get to the data import options. So we recommend following this two-step process. So first, you're going to run a full data import of all the data from Trackit 11.4 into 2020. At this point, if everything runs perfectly and your configuration setup that you have to do in 2020 is very short and you've already used the system and you've seen how it works and you're ready to go, you could actually go live at this point on track of 2020 and stop using 11.4. However, that's not the case for most customers. Most customers are new to the new platform. They are they're not exactly sure how everything works. They're getting used to the configuration and the business rules and all of those sorts of things. And so what we would recommend you do here is you go ahead and run this first import, this first step. And then once you do that, you spend some time getting to know Track of 2020. You play with the configuration, you set up your business rules, you make sure the email configuration is set up and working properly. You do all of those things and get the system all configured and ready to go, ready for you to go live. And that's probably gonna take you a few days to do that. Or if your system is very simple and straightforward, it might only take you a few hours. But in the time you're 
doing that, your users may still be using track at 11.4. At that point, you will need to run this step two, this optional step here, to refresh the data in track at 2020 before you actually go live. So when you run the module data refresh as step two, when you're ready to go live, this will bring over all the module data from track at 11.4. So all your tickets and all your change requests and all that stuff. And it'll preserve all the configuration data that's already in track at 2020. This would be the last step you would do just before you go live. So again, just in summary, you'd run step one, the full data import, then do all your configuration settings and training and all of that. And then right when you're ready to go live, like if you have a, a go live window over a weekend or something, that's where you would run step two, the module data refresh, get all the data updated. And if everything goes well, then you can cut over and stop using 11.4 after that. The second migration option we have down here at the bottom is not for everyone, but we do have some customers that requested this, which is why we've included it now. Some customers say, hey, I've been using TrackIt for 25 years and we have lots of old data in it we don't need anymore. And really what we'd like to do is start fresh on the new version, but we'd like to pull over things like our status values and our priorities and things like that. So if you're in that category and you'd rather go that route, then you would just do option two. Option two is just going to copy over just the configuration information that it can. Then you can go ahead and start playing around with that system and getting ready to use it. For the purposes of this video, we're going to start with option one and step one and go through those options. So this is going to work for most users. If you click on advanced options down here, you get some more settings that you can play with to further customize what data gets pulled over as part of that full data import. For now, we're going to go ahead and ignore all of those things and leave them as the default values. So we're going to collapse that. We're going to leave it on step one and we're going to go ahead and hit start migration. So you may see this warning when you first start the migration, and that is because track at 11.4 allowed you to have duplicate asset names in your system, whereas track at 2020 does not. So when this situation occurs, you can go ahead and click no to stop the migration process and go investigate and change any duplicate names and correct those in track at 11.4 and then come back and start again. Or you can go ahead and click yes and the process will start off. And if we run into any duplicate asset names along the way, track it will basically handle that. So if it finds an asset called computer, and then it finds another asset called computer, it's going to rename the second one to computer with an underscore and a ID number or something after it so that the duplicates can be imported over and no data is lost. And then you would have to go back in to track it 2020 at some point and correct those asset names that were renamed. So you have an option there of how you want to handle those duplicates. And so for this video, I'm going to go ahead and just click yes to get started. Now you'll see this progress screen here. This entire migration process could take anywhere from 10 minutes to several hours, depending on how much data you have and the size of your database. So we're going to go ahead and just let this run here. Now at this point, our migration is complete. You'll notice it says migration completed successfully. And it also mentions you will want to restart the IIS services on your track at 2020 server. And that will just make sure that all the new settings and all the new data is applied. So that's the end of the typical full migration. So at this point, now's the time to go into track at 2020, check out all your configuration settings, set those up, set up all your business rules, set up your email configuration, set up your Active Directory importer if you like do some training of your technicians and your end users. And then when you're ready to go live here, after you've done all of those things, then you can run this tool again. And the next time you run it, you will select the second option. So I'm just gonna go back here just so you can see that just one last time. So after you've spent some time working in the system, getting it all set up the way you want, you're gonna run this tool again and come back in and do step two and refresh your module data. That concludes the overview of the migration tool. I hope this video has been helpful to you. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right hand corner inside Trackit. Some other useful resources are the Trackit community where you can talk with other Trackit users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. 
And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.